I, 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 I'm, I'm causing problems again today. What, what is it? Thursday? Is, uh, is it Thursday? What day is it? No, it isn't. No, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. It isn't. Oh, dude, you would have messed me up tomorrow. I have to wake up early tomorrow. You would have messed me up. First day of school. Yeah, first day of school for my kids. So, uh, yeah, Thursday. Okay, Thursday. Jeez, Joe. <sighs> it is Thursday. Wrong. Holy smokes. Um, well, now I'm all discombobulated. Okay, so it's Thursday. All right. And I'm causing problems again. So what's, let me refresh this. What's the poll at now on Facebook? And go, we're live streaming, by the way, on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook at Casey the Host. But I've got a poll on Facebook, facebook.com slash Casey the Host. Uh, I, I think I'm going to comment on Tribune articles more. It's been fun, to say the least. So the poll right now is the most lopsided poll that I've ever done, and it is more lopsided than when I started the show 40 minutes ago. So the poll is about my comment on an article that was in the South Bend Tribune. Okay, It was like an opinion piece in the South Bend Tribune. Before I get to the poll, okay, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to read to you from the opinion piece in the South Bend Tribune. Now, it involves the South Bend Police Department. It involves the, uh, the Eric Logan shooting and all of that. Okay, So it's a viewpoint article, which are usually ones that come from the community and not the editorial board, but <clears throat> um, guns don't belong at community meetings with South Bend police. That's the name of it. Now, if you've ever met a police officer, or if you've ever met anybody who is pro-gun control, they will still tell you that uh, police officers should be exempt from all of those limitations, because police officers are always armed. Always. That's a part of their job, even when they're not on duty. Last week kicked off a series of community meetings hosted by the South Bend uh, Board of Public Safety with the goal of discussing police policies in the wake of the police shooting death of Eric Logan on June 16th. Now, I already gave you my opinion about these things and uh, why I feel that these are largely a giant waste of time. But I, you, you also can't oppose them. Politically, you can't do it. You have to go along with it, right? Although we appreciate the efforts of the Public Board of Safety and the City of South Bend to organize these community events in hopes of building trust between the community and the South Bend Police Department, there was a glaring issue which needs, which needs to be addressed. The plain clothed officers in attendance were wearing firearms. Oh my. What are we going to do now? Whether these officers were on duty or off duty doesn't matter. Well, I mean... Technically, you're right. It doesn't matter, but not for the reason that you think, uh, because they're always armed. What we do know is the insensitivity and intimidation of firearms during a community dinner and during the small group discussions of police misconduct, claims of use of excessive force, and even a current investigation and pending litigation for the potential wrongful death or manslaughter of Eric Logan by former officer Ryan O'Neill. You notice. That, how they phrase that. Regardless, Sergeant O'Neill's guilty of something. They didn't include in there or the exoneration of Sergeant O'Neill, now former police officer. Chief of Police Scott Ruskowski was in attendance and was not wearing a firearm, or so you think. So why did the other members of the police department? How are we to unite as a community to build trust with the police department if they distrust us enough to wear firearms to these meetings? That was as far as I got. And I looked up at the top, and I did not see an author. So I was like, all right, did this come from the editorial board? Which I thought was weird for a viewpoint thing, and I didn't see a name. Okay, so now on, in, in bold on the bottom, which I did not see... Uh, submitted by Eric Well Bloss on behalf of Tyree Bonds, the brother of Eric Logan. Okay, Now, Eric Logan, as you should know by now, is the guy who was breaking into cars and stealing stuff and came at Sergeant Ryan O'Neill with a knife. And Sergeant O'Neill shot him twice, and unfortunately, he passed away. The knife that he had in his hands was claimed by the owner of another vehicle as being a knife that he had in his car. Okay? So, again, that's always conveniently left out of these, these articles. They always leave that out of the articles. Now, I have no idea uh, who this uh, Eric Well Bloss individual is. No clue. But, Ty, uh, let's see what, Tyree Bonds is the brother of Eric Logan. 
So my comment was simple. Um, called them a pathetic snowflake. So pretty simple, easy, easy response. Now, naturally, naturally, some people are butt hurt by that because this is the brother of somebody who was killed by a cop. And how dare I, how dare I call them a pathetic snowflake? Um, well, first of all, I didn't realize that it was being written on behalf of the brother of said bad guy. Second, it's irrelevant anyway. My position stands. Police should be armed everywhere they go because they're cops and that is their job. And to, to go out there and say that they distrust us in these community meetings and that's why they're armed is so patently demented that I don't even actually have a, a, a good enough word for it, to be perfectly honest. Demented is a pretty good one, but it's not good enough. It's intellectually deficient is what it is. So here we have somebody writing an article saying that we want to meet with the police. We don't want the police to ever have guns on. They're cops. I don't know a police officer. I don't know one of them who isn't armed 24-7. I've never met one who doesn't have their firearm on them at all times. I know police departments where you're required to be armed everywhere you go, whether you're on or off duty. Okay? I don't know if that's the case in South Bend or not. But I do know of departments where all officers are considered to be on call 24 hours a day. And if there is an emergency, you are expected to respond in kind. It's kind of like a volunteer firefighter. They are expected to have their gear with them at all times. Doesn't mean they're going to go to a fire. Doesn't mean they're actually going to do anything. But they're required to have their gear with them at all times. And it's pretty much the same thing in many departments across the United States with police officers. And so you're trying to have this meeting. And here's people going, oh my gosh, I see a boomstick and I'm so scared. Um. Yeah, you're pathetic. Sorry, you're pathetic. Uh, the author of the piece, I now know it's the author of the piece. I didn't know. It sent me a message. You're calling the brother of Eric Logan pathetic? I, I was actually calling the author pathetic. But if the author is just conveying the words of Tyree Bonds, then yeah, I'm calling him pathetic too. Casey, he's the brother of somebody who was killed by a police officer. Yeah, he's also the brother of a guy who is burglarizing cars, has a long criminal history, and had a bloody hand with a knife in it who came at a police officer and was using a knife that was identified by one of the victims of his break-ins. That's where we're at. So I'm sorry that your relative acted stupidly. I realize that that is not your fault. And I realize that that does not change your feelings about your relative and that you are going to grieve. But let me ask you this question, ladies and gentlemen. Before I ask you the same question that I have with the poll on my Facebook page right now, which is the most lopsided poll I've ever had on the Facebook page. Is my calling the brother of a criminal who came at a police officer in a lethal, threatening manner, is my calling of them being a pathetic snowflake, is that more or less egregious than Tyree Bonds saying that Sergeant O'Neill, or I should say inferring that Sergeant O'Neill murdered his brother and then flat out saying categorically that the South Bend Police Department was covering it up. In fact, Tyree Bonds is quoted in one article that I read over the, uh, over the course of this fiasco this morning as saying that Ryan O'Neill's camera was on and the South Bend Police Department is simply hiding the tape so they didn't want to release it to the, so that way they didn't have to release it to the public. Because, again, the inference is that Sergeant O'Neill murdered his brother. And that his brother is a total innocent uh, individual. He's probably, you know, uh, really bright. He's in glee, even though he's, what is he, in his 50s or something like that. He's in glee. He's on his way to college. He's a really bright student. He's that type of guy. And, no. Sorry. Uh, what Tyree Bonds has said is far more egregious than anything that I have said. And if Tyree Bonds wants to go ahead and sling some mud, he better be willing to take it back when he says something stupid. Or, excuse me, has somebody right on his behalf saying something this pathetic and stupid. But my question, my question, that's my, all my opinion, okay? My question for all of you is the same as the poll. And I would encourage you to take the poll too. Go to facebook.com slash Casey the host. Did I go too far in calling them a pathetic snowflake? Did I go too far? Now, like I said, I, I genuinely had no idea that the article was written on behalf of the brother of Eric Logan. But it doesn't matter. Okay, the same thing was said. The circumstances of the individual who said it is irrelevant.
it's still a stupid statement. It's a stupid statement. It doesn't make any sense. And it's utterly ludicrous to say that the police don't trust us. And that's why they're armed when they go to these community meetings. It's just stupid. So did I go too far? You can give us a call and let us know, or you can go to facebook.com slash Casey, the host and take the poll. It is pinned to the top of my Facebook page. And you can let me know there. We've got more coming up on Newstalk 95.3, Michiana's news channel.